So, welcome to Insights into Europe, navigating the orchestra scene in Germany and the UK. Next slide, please. <laughs> we're we're going to get this down. We're going to get this down. <laughs> My name is Jennifer. Um, and I was actually born here in Detroit um, at Hustle Hospital on John R., right? And I moved to Berlin 21 years ago, but I'm still a proud Detroiter. You can see from my t shirt. Okay. Um, and I'm the founding director of something called Classical Next. And I'm here with uh, my two European colleagues, Anselm Rose of the Deutsche Orchester Tag. Right. And um, <laughs> Mark Pemberton, the inimitable Mark Pemberton of the Association of British Orchestras. Um, and together, myself, Mark, and Anselm, we represent a little sliver of the world of classical next. Okay, can you give me the next slide? Okay, so I'm going to begin with telling you a little bit about classical next, what it is. Um, but first I want to tell you, this session, the overall theme is opportunity. Um, opportunity in Europe. Europe is the land of opportunity for classical musicians in the professional classical world. And Classical Next is also a world of opportunity in itself, which ta actually takes place in Europe. So this, is, this session is hopefully going to give you some helpful tips and advice for you to make the most of the opportunities that these uh, have to offer, or at least be aware of them. Okay, so Classical Next is, it's a four-day meeting, and it gets the entire world of the classical music scene together in one place at one time to team up, to um, partner develop partnerships, to find new opportunities, to investigate new paths forward. Um, it's a really wonderful place to get an awful lot done in very little time. All right. Oh, I can actually take that over there. Thank you. Okay. So Classical Next is dedicated exclusively to classical and art music. That's all we do, but we do it very, very thoroughly. We have a very extensive conference program we have showcases, we have an expo with oof, um, hundreds and hundreds of exhibitors, um, many, many country stands. It's been called the Olympics, the Olympics of classical music. It's truly international. At the fifth edition, Classical Next is quite young, it's only existed for five years so far, we had 1,200 professionals from 46 countries and we're still growing. And we have all sectors from classical and art music. So we have performing artists, we have artist managers, we have arts presenters, people who run um, concert halls, festivals, event series of various kinds. We have record labels, we have distributors, journalists, uh, conservatories, um, you name it. If, if it's a profession within classical music, it's at Classical Next. Also, when, it's, when we do classical, we do it in the entire spectrum. We cover the economic aspects, social and artistic aspects of the industry. So things with streaming, with communication, with um, new formats for presenting live music. We, we cover the whole spectrum. The, the overriding theme, though, is innovation. That's the overriding theme. We're looking for new ways forward, for better ways of doing things, and for actually making the world a better place through classical music. All of our content is user-generated, and it's democratically selected. And finally, the two aims of Classical Next are to unite, to unite the entire world's classical music, and to push things forward. Okay, so just be aware of this. Check out our website, classicalnext.com. Have a look at all the things that we're doing. We, can, we also list out all of the benefits of taking part. So if you're an, an ambitious entrepreneurial person, it's something you might want to 
check out and take part in. We're a network as well. We are a global network. We support each other um, and we work together. Okay, so we're now we're gonna hand over in just a moment. Hey, aren't I good? Look at that, right on time. Almost. <laughs> Almost. Session aims. So the, se the aims of this session, we're going to inform you about two of the most important classical music markets and employer bases in Europe. These are Germany and the UK. There are jobs out there. It's a good place to be. There, that's where I am, that's where I landed. And actually, I was told in music school, I went to music school at University of Michigan uh, and Interlochen Arts Academy. And what was I told in music school? If you want to have a career, go to Germany. I'm in Germany. So the focus here, though, will be on orchestras because we're limited in time. And I have two amazing people for this, the perfect guys to do exactly this job. We're going to start with Germany my uh, country of choice, with Anselm Rose. Take it away, Anselm. Thank you, Jennifer. All right. Um, after 20 years being a chief execu executive of uh, orchestras in Germany, I'm now responsible for the Deutsche Orchestertag, which is basically a organization that represents the uh, German-speaking orchestra management in Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. And we have an annual conference of all German-speaking orchestras. Some Dutch are always there as well. And what we do basically is we focus on cultural politics, on the future of music industry. Musicians profile is something that we are working on. Um, orchestras and new digital technologies, marketing, etc. as you can imagine. Um, and the main question, as Jennifer pointed out, that I'd like you to be introduced today is the question how to get into the music market, how to get into Europe. Yes, there are possibilities, and yes, they are kind of waiting for you. This is what I'm going to tell you. So I talk about orchestras, and I talk about chamber music, teaching, and solo stuff. First of all, we have 131 full-time professional orchestras in Germany. This is about uh, 10,000 jobs. And the funding and the corporate structures is totally different to the US, as you probably know. Most of the orchestras are actually owned by the government, by the local government or by the regional government. So most of the funding, like up to 80%, comes from taxpayers' money. There's only another 20% to be earned with ticket sales and fundraising and so on. And uh, so this gives actually a very, uh, a very stable financial basis for uh, employing musicians. The salaries in German orchestras range from, let's say, 30,000 uh, US dollars a year up to 130,000 dollars a year um, when you're a concertmaster at the Berlin Philharmonic, for example. But never forget, the employment conditions are different to, to the ones on the US market. Once you're in, you're in forever. So there's a retirement age of 65, and, uh, well, you can continue, but usually, you're asked politely to leave the job at the age of 65. And you have uh, health care, insurance, social insurance, all that stuff, and they cannot simply kick you out. For artistic reasons, they can, but uh, it's really, really difficult, which is also difficult for the management side or the orchestra itself, but it gives you really a stable working conditions over in Germany. And with that money I showed you, it's easy to make a living in Germany. Okay. Um, currently, this Friday, there are about 270 jobs vacant. I can't give you the number of the entire year, to be honest, but um, it is fairly easy to see that there will be, as these figures should suggest, there's a laser pointer. As I told you, there the, the retirement age is 65. So as you can see here, in 2011, which is this one, 12 to 13 percent of the people there will retire in five or six years, so this is now. And as you can see, the other figures there, there's a high, um, how do you say, a high share of elderly people who will retire within the next five to ten years. So the number of vacant jobs in Germany will actually go up. Now, how can you access the German labor market? It's fairly easy, simply apply. Applying at a German orchestra, oh sorry, applying at a German orchestra is very easy actually. Most of you probably know, can you see, oh, I'm sorry, but I can give you that later on uh, again. These are German websites where all the 
orchestra jobs are advertised. So it's, I, I, I try to put that later on. Um, actually, one of them is called um, MUV.AC, where you can actually apply on the website. So they have uh, MUV.AC. Um, you can apply there directly on the website. Um, I think <laughs> it's, it's, it's the gray color, so you cannot read. I'm sorry for that. So that's make it difficult to read. Um, yeah, the first one, MUV.AC, that's actually the one where you can apply on the website. And musicjobs.com, that's easy, as actually easy to remember. Um, and I think Google does the rest. So, <laughs> so how to how to get into that? Well, that's quite simple. I'm, I'm a little ironic. You might excuse. Uh, win an audition as simple as that. Why I'm saying it, it is that simple because the access to the German labor market is fairly easy for your citizens. Believe it or not, you enter the country first. You don't need a visa or something. Pack your violin or your flute. Go over there or apply it first, of course, and then go over there. You don't have to tell at the customs that you are looking for a job. Right? So win this audition, okay, <laughs> that's fairly difficult, but if you win this audition, you get a job offer by the orchestra, and as soon as you get the job offer, the orchestra management will look for the residence permit for you. Well, you have to apply for it, you have to do all the bu bureaucracy, but they will help you. So you don't need the permission in advance. At the very moment that you win an audition, they will look after that. Um, I don't know what's next. Oh yeah. And what about the auditions in Germany? I think they are very, very, very similar to the uh, to the uh, um, to the American ones. Actually, um, we have auditions at least the first round behind a curtain. So t this, to some respect, respects diversity because nobody will figure out who's there. If it's a foreigner or a German or whatever, you know. Um, so th this gives the chance, um, and also the orchestra is. Uh, having the entire audition. That means the orchestra there for, let's say, between 50 up to 130 musicians. So it's not only one person or a committee, a, a committee or a board that's um, having the audition. It's the entire orchestra who's there. So there's the situation of, let's say, more or less a democratic selection process. And of course, you know, playing behind the curtain gives the orchestra the chance to focus on artistic quality. Um, Let's talk shortly about chamber music and teaching, which is a different story. These jobs are also in Germany mainly freelance work. It's very comparable to your US situation. Um, and according to the, to the statistics that I found, the income perspective would be less than 16,000 US dollars a year, um, where you can hardly make a living yet in Germany, actually. The employment possibilities, if you're looking for a stable contract, it is possible if you find a job at music schools, or conservatories or arts universities. There are lots of foreigners working over there in these institutions. Then you have working and employment conditions comparable to the ones I mentioned before for the orchestra seats. But, oh yeah, and if you're a chamber musician or a solo musician, of course, that's fairly ironic. Again, I, get, I have to admit, find an agent, of course. If you have temporary business on a tour, it's very easy to go over to Europe and earn some money over there. But this is the latest development, be your own agent. There is actually an Austrian product. It's a website called hellostage.com, I think. Yeah, Hello Stage. These are the new ways of direct marketing. So if you have a string quartet or whatever chamber ensemble yourself, try this website to promote yourself to European promoters. It might work well because lots of European promoters don't trust agents anymore. So they are really looking themselves to find talents in the internet. And by invitation only means very easy if you, um, if you are invited by a European or German promoter, it is very easy to get in there with your ensemble. So freelance work in Germany, uh, once again, is very easy to get into the country for your citizens, as I told you earlier, but be aware of the very fact it's a highly competitive situation, despite from the very low income that I mentioned. And of course, you have to have some necessary language skills especially when you go to music school or university, and it's a very low income. Now I come to the uh, diversity inclusion topics. You might have heard about all the refugees that came over to Europe, and this, that was the very slogan where some people in Germany really provided a very warm welcome to the refugees, especially from Syria. Um, 
to integrate all these refugees into German society is more of a question about integration, not about it's not a question of inclusion. There is actually a Syrian expat symphony orchestra in Germany, but this is, uh, uh, and, and some of the institutions in Germany, like the orchestras and concert halls, they are providing concerts especially for refugees, and also they provide Syrian folk music and stuff, but that's a different topic. If you see um, the people with disabilities, this is uh, something very important at the moment. We have inclusive strategies on participation that might sound very familiar to you, but this um, goes for the audience attends as well, you know, get into, the, uh, get into the hall without any barriers, physical language barriers, audio descriptive uh, contents that are offered, and, but it also goes for the musician's side, so which is very new in Germany now is that, you, that we try to really create inclusive education work, active and passive, and of course to get people with disabilities to become orchestra musicians. There's a very small number actually in German orchestras, but you have people with disabilities working there. And as you can see, it is, um, uh, you, you cannot see of course, <laughs> but if you, <laughs> if you go on this website that I mentioned earlier, it is, uh, as you say in English, uh, equal employer situation, isn't that? that um, equal opportunity e employer? Yes, that means explicitly people with disabilities and explicitly foreigners here, believe it or not, the Stuttgart Radio Orchestra is, um, is asking foreigners to apply there because they want to have a diverse orchestra. They want to have diversity within their own orchestra. So here you can see actually with the advertisings that they are focusing on the groups which are not represented well at the moment. Um, so, and of course they're in white, well, the, the women's topics there as well, uh, as I told you before. Um, what's very important is we have about 50% of the musicians are now women in German orchestras, and they're actually more than 50% working as music teachers. And as you can see here, in the orchestras, there's a number of about 20% foreigners working over there, and, well, singers as well a little bit more. Um, so, actually, as I can tell you, German orchestras, the German orchestra market is waiting for you to, ap to apply because the situation in Germany is, of course, everybody is welcome, but also there's a lack of highly qualified musicians at the moment. So, these orchestras are explicitly looking for foreigners to come over to Germany to take over the job. It's a process in, uh, diversity in inclusion is a process in Germany which is very slow, as many things are. It was initiated by the UNESCO and the UN, as you probably know, and uh, it's a growing awareness in the public sector, but it's very slow. So I think um, to see this progress that I showed you before, it gains, another, uh, it gains relevance in another 10 to 15 years. But at the moment, this is a good chance to apply there, and I can just motivate you to do that. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Anselm. Now we're going to change to a European neighbor, Britain. That's you, okay. what you do. Oh. Hello, everybody. I'm Mark Everton <laughs> from the Association of British Orchestras. You've had a long day. So uh, we'll try to keep things a bit pepped up for you because uh, I know how hard it is to, uh, to keep going. Um, so look, the UK, or the confusingly named the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland, is not Germany. In fact, the Germans famously called us Das Land ohne Musik, the land without music. <laughs> yes. But I shall put, put pay to that insult. We've, we've never got over it. So look, the UK, of course, does indeed have music. So I'm Mark Pemberton. I'm director of the Association of British Orchestras, which is the Association of British Orchestras. Um, and I've been doing that for 10 years. But we're based in London, but obviously we cover the whole of our country. Um, and I'm just going to give you a very quick overview of kind of where we fit in this, uh, because, as I say, we're not Germany. And as some of you will know, we are shortly not going to be part of Europe either, which complicates the situation somewhat. Um, so, basically, who, who am I talking about? Who are my members? Well, some of these are quite famous orchestras. Um, we're going to... Uh, my, my slides are completely in the wrong order, so I'm completely wrong footed. It should, no. They're gonna, uh, they're gonna keep coming in. Okay, it's been completely messed up. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, 
Right, my lovely WYSI graphics have completely gone to pieces. So basically what you've got is an overview of the kind of range of members I've got. In terms of orchestras, they cover symphony orchestras um, at, of, and uh, where you can see on the top things like the London Symphony Orchestra, London Philharmonic. These are very well known internationally, the Philharmonia. We've got radio orchestras. These are five orchestras that are part of the BBC. Uh, we've got uh, a whole range of chamber orchestras. Uh, including contemporary music ensembles and period instrument ensembles. And we've got the orchestras that are, um, em that are the opera and ballet orchestras. So we have those opera companies like the Royal Opera, English National Opera, that have uh, full-time salaried orchestras. So th the key point to make, though, is of the 65 orchestras I have in my membership, only 15 of those are symphony orchestras. And we are a country of 75 million people. So... The fact is that well, I have politicians who come to me saying, we have too many symphony orchestras, and we have the same as Finland, which has 5 million people, and we heard from Anselm, he has 130 orchestras in Germany. So we are small, but there are jobs, however, buried away among those orchestras. So some facts about them, we've just done our latest statistic, is that actually we're reaching nearly 5 million attendees, plus 900,000 children and young people through our education activity. So actually, that's a lot of the population we are engaging with through what we do, and we're busy internationally. We do a lot of touring, because of course, once you are in Europe, other European countries are on your doorstep, and there's a lot of touring, but of course, there's also a lot of touring back into the USA. Um, and we've got 2,400 musicians who have kind of permanent jobs. Um, I would put a little stat in about 20% from other EU countries, on top of that are the musicians from outside the European Union. We're a very globalized workforce. So uh, we welcome global talent into our orchestras. We welcome them. It is our government that might be the problem. Um, and there's the money. So you know, we, are, you know, we created some money. And the crucial thing is where our money comes from. Because um, whereas uh, orchestras in Germany and other continental European countries have very high levels of government funding, we certainly have more than our colleagues here in the USA, but we do have to earn our keep. So we're earning about 50% of our money through ticket sales, commercial hires, and touring. So we're busy. And we're having to be busy because the government funding is decreasing uh, following the global financial crash. The 7% um, from the national funding, 11% on, on your city funding, that has decreased since 2013, is on top of significant, even greater de decreases from 2010. So we're operating in an environment where we've had about 30% of our government funding has disappeared, which does make life a bit tricky. So the five key points about our orchestras is we have three employment models. We have what are known as self-governing orchestras. That is, the members of the orchestra own that orchestra. They have a share in that orchestra. They are treated as self-employed. Uh, but they drive their man they, they, they own the managers. The managers are their creatures and are made to do their bidding and have to get them a lot of work. Contract is where the full, is that's a salaried. That is where, you know, we have got quite a few, half that 2,400 are, are on a full-time salary. That is the BBC orchestras, the opera and ballet orchestras, and the regional orchestras in cities like Birmingham, Manchester, Liverpool, Glasgow, Belfast. And then there's all those people are on the freelance market. Um, a lot of my orchestras, the chamber orchestras, you are self-employed, you're paid you know, concert by concert. Of course, being a member, you're entitled to a significant proportion of the, the, um, the concerts that that orchestra does. So we've talked about the different employment models, but uh, whether you are freelance or employed, you can come and work in the UK. Uh, the mixed economy, we rely on earned government and fundraised. Now, trialling, this is where we are different. You do not get a job through an audition. You have to audition in the first place, but then you're put on a trial. And that means you're called back to do five or six concerts during a season so that the members of the orchestra can hear you in action. And if you're a violinist, you might need to be shuffled around the section so other members of the, get to sit next to you. It's a long process, and it takes up to, 24, up to two years before a decision is made as to whether you have been successfully appointed. Uh, unlike, I think, what you have here in the States, which are maybe in Germany, where you're appointed on a probation, and then you might lose your job after six months. 
So once you've got it through trial, they're not going to get rid of you because they worked extremely hard to get you there in the first place. But this is where we get quite tricky because uh, the points-based system for migrant workers, which was introduced by our government in around 2008, means that we are not as open as our friends in Germany. There are rules that have to be followed around how you can, as a non-European citizen, come and work in the UK. And the crucial thing to understand is, once you're in Germany, you have open access to the 27 countries of the European Union, plus Norway and Switzerland, through open borders and free movement. But the UK sits outside that and will only give you a visa to work in the UK. So if you want to then go and work in Germany, you've got to get another visa to go into there. So we don't make life very easy. And we set earnings thresholds. You have to apply outside of the country. You cannot apply in country. So basically, you must have been offered a job. Oi, shut that thing off. I'm still going. Um, so um, you, have, you, know, you must be outside the country, have been offered the job. So you can come in on a temporary basis to do the trialing, and then you reapply for, to get the permanent position. Uh, the phone's going everywhere. And, um, <laughs> Uh, so it's a bit, there is, it's quite cumbersome, and for the employer, there's money involved. There, we have to pay the government some money. We have to pay for you to get access to our national health service. Um, and as I say, you must be earning up to a certain salary level to have the right to stay after five years. But Brexit, which Mr. Trump referenced frequently, is an interesting development, because suddenly we are now going to be leaving the European Union, and the potential is that we won't treat people differently. It won't matter whether you are a German or an American, the same rules will apply. And what this may mean is that while we start to control all these Germans coming into our country, of which there are not many, frankly, who wants to come to us, um, <laughs> um, uh, it, it, they, the suggestion is it might actually become easier for Americans and Australians and Canadians to come and work in the UK. So we, I, I can keep things informed as we develop around whether the opportunities are getting tighter or because we have got a right-wing government that has a lot of anti-immigration rhetoric and, wants to and is leaving the European Union specifically to control uh, migration into the UK. So it could be an opportunity or it could be a threat. At the moment, we just do not know. But orchestras will continue to play great music and I want the most talented people to be in the workforce. Uh, in terms of diversity, uh, I've been coming to League of American Orchestras conferences now for quite a few years, and the conversations I hear at, uh, at those conferences and I have heard here are very similar to what we have in the UK. We have very low levels of black and minority ethnic musicians. Uh, we have achieved gender balance, but we, um, we are under a lot of scrutiny about the, the lack of uh, cultural diversity. Uh, we do the same thing, which is we blame each element of the pipeline. We say, well, we can't change until the conservatoires have changed. Because I say we can't change until music education has improved and nothing ever then happens. So we are at a point at which people now have to take action to remedy this diversity deficit. Um, but Chi Chi Nuanaku, who is in the building somewhere, uh, is our pioneer in creating Chiniki, which is Europe's first black and minority ethnic orchestra. So she is taking the action that, with luck, will really start to make significant inroads into becoming a more diverse and representative orchestral community. I think that that is me. And you can find out more about me, ABO, at the small grey website address <laughs> down at the bottom. Okay, I think I'm done, Jen. Yeah, all right, click to the next one. Click to the next slide. Thank you. Okay, so now we want to um, do a little bit of group work here. We want to find out actually who's in the room first. Um, who in the room is a performing artist or an artist manager? How many people? Okay, Ooh, quite a few. All right, hands down. Who is an educator and a student? All right, Ooh, really big group. Hmm, okay. Do we have any funders and administrators in the room? Oh, not bad. <laughs> and do we have any event producers or tour organizers in the, gr in the room? Uh, no. Okay, so I think maybe what we'll do, I think the biggest group, we're going to divide into four groups. I think we'll have two groups of educators and students, I think, because we had a really big group of those. So what we're going to do is divide into four groups in the four, so sort of four corners of the room, and each group 
well, first of all, we're going to divide up. So, um, performing artists and artist managers, raise your hand again. Okay, if you could all stand up and move to this side of the room, to this area, and people sitting in this area who are not in that group, can you move out? Okay, performing artists, artist managers, group you all over here. And you can take one of those and, uh, and some Crayola markers. Okay. All right, so, and now educators and students. There are a lot of you, so let's do two groups of those. One group of educators and students up here, and the second one in the back. Okay, so everyone please get up and move. Quickly, quickly. And our modest but mighty group of funders and administrators, please group yourselves in the back corner. And every w each group gets a pad and markers. Okay? And now take, sit down, please take seats, move the chairs so that you can all communicate with each other, maybe in a circle or in a cluster. Please form your chairs so that you can communicate with each other. quickly as possible, time is tight. Our gentleman had so much wonderful stuff to say. All right, quickly take your seats, get cozy. Okay, appoint one person to be a note taker. Yay! Quick work, we like that. Quick and efficient work. One person in your group to be note taker. Okay, now, I want you to discuss in your groups your highest priority questions or issues on the subject of Europe or working in Europe. What questions do you have? What are the most burning issues for you about the potential of working in Europe? Or maybe, maybe you're like, how, how could I do that? You know, maybe it's a, just a big mystery. Whatever your most pressing questions are, discuss those. Come up with three questions. Your top three questions will be listed on this piece of paper, okay? And you've only got five minutes to do this. All right? Sorry about that. <laughs> we went over time a little bit. So, off you go.
If the sessions were longer, I, w I originally planned to give you 10 minutes, but we've already gone over. So pick your top question. What's the most burning question that you've got? One question. I know it's going to be tough. Yeah, if we've got time, we're going to answer the top burning question. Though That's going to be answered here. And if we have time, we'll just keep going and answer more questions, right? And the rest of the questions, anyway, decide your top, decide your top question. Okay, you've got 30 seconds to decide that top question. You're done? You're so efficient, John. <laughs> I could learn from you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, all right, great, well done, well done. Nothing like working under pressure. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is each group spokesperson, we're going to just go group by group by group by group in a circle, and we will answer as many of your questions as we can, starting with the top burning one, okay? Huh? You want to answer the bottom? I'm sure we'll get to that. Okay. All right. So we're going to start over here with group number one. Please ans ask your top question. Our top question was how can people fund travel from the United States and other places to Europe, including knowledge of grants, stipends, et cetera, and where to find them? Cool. To tell you, that, can you answer that one? Uh, because that's um, a tough one. No, because obviously you're more likely, well, you know, either you're operating a commercial marketplace, so it's down to the promoter in the country to which you want to visit as to whether they're going to be able to support the cost of it, or there may be an expectation you're going to be able to access that funding here to bring you over to Europe. So it's going to be a combination of the two and just basically hustling for whichever side is going to be able to provide some money. Um, promoter budgets in Germany, I'm sure, are so generous. <laughs> yeah? You that know, you'll be okay. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, yeah. I, but I want to answer question three. Uh, can, I, can I answer <laughs> question one? <laughs> the Germans are even more mean than the Scots are. But uh, so if you apply it in German Scots orchestra, well <laughs> if you apply it in German orchestra, they might pay you the travel from the border, from the <laughs> German border, to the place where you're going. Uh, but it wouldn't be a flight over from America to Europe. That one has would have to, you know, get this money yourself. That was a tough question. All right, so. Now we'll go to this group over here, actually, because you're oops, closer. Um, what are the audition requirements and expectations like in Germany and the UK for orchestras? Well, audition requirements usually are um, to play a solo concert for your instrument. Let's talk about the violin. It would be one of the Mozart violin concertos. Full length. They will start with the first movement, probably the second one. Um, then you have this, uh, what do you say, these extracts of orchestral pieces. Sec yeah, thank you. That will be second round most of the time. And there must be a third round most of the times where you start again with another mostly romantic violin concert, for example. There can be another fourth or fifth round with orchestra extracts. But you have to prepare a solo concert and the orchestra part. And I'm really sorry that I don't know the answer. For somebody who runs an associate of orchestras, I have never worked in an orchestra. <laughs> but of course, I'm sure we can find that information if you need it. Oh, I think it's usually published. Uh, yes, it's well. published before. They will tell you uh, uh, with the invitation letter, they will tell you. Yeah. Y 
usually, yes, they do. It might that they interrupt somewhere in between the first movement, but usually um, it's you know, to make you familiar with the room and you know, feel well, they let you play the first movement. Yes, always. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, are we oh. Uh, can we move on yep. this? Okay. So now we have this group in the back. Who's the spokesperson? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, my um, question is about uh, the diversity factor um, in Europe. Um, us being here as people of color and focusing on diversity and um, that's being the main focus of why we're here, um, how does that translate to when we come over to Germany or Britain? Um, I know you said that with you know the Brexit decision and with uh, a lot of members of the uh, government leaning towards anti-immigration issues, um, of course some of that trickles down into the uh, social aspect of living into that country. So um, would, it, would it be challenging, uh, would we be coming into a challenging environment where we face um, issues of discrimination in uh, places like that. I know I read something not too long ago about East Germany being a little more um, divisive. Uh, so will we have, will we, is that realistically an issue that we'd have to consider? I'll go, well, I'll go first and say no in the UK. We are a multicultural country. Um, our s orchestras are tend to be located in cities that have sizable um, ethnic minority populations. In fact, we have some cities where they're going to become ethnic minority majority, if you understand what I mean. So, and what I was saying about our low levels is we are desperate to change. And I think there would actually be an advantage to be, a be appearing for a job coming from being black and minority ethnic, because we are very, very keen to welcome more people of, of color into our orchestra. Um, that's a crucial question. It's not easy for me to answer. But to be honest, I live in the very east. I live in Dresden, which has got two orchestras, very fine orchestras, who are really starving to get foreigners in there of high quality musicians, mu musical talent. And, uh, and there are, of course, people of color living in Germany as well, especially when the American army came in. Lots of them stayed there. But the major foreigner population would be like Turks or Italians who are living uh, in Germany. So I can't answer very precisely your question if this is going to be a problem for people of color. But uh, of course, um, as, as, as Mark pointed out, it's, uh, time is there. Time is ready for that. So this is why I hi can highly motivate you to come over and apply and give it a try. And I just, just stress, where the UK is having a problem with immigration is not American and it's not people of color. It's unfortunately people from Eastern Europe. It's Poles, yeah. Hungarians who have come in very large numbers. And that is what has created this Brexit scenario. Nothing to, in fact, I think we, th it's actually now, I would say, gonna create an easier opportunity for Americans to come in than it did before. Okay, so we're gonna move to this group back here. Your spokesperson, uh, who is that? Ah. Uh, so our tiny yet mighty group of administrators uh, had a good discussion, uh, but and everybody got a lot of words in because we are such a small group. Um, I think I, I, I'm going to do two things right now, and the first thing I'm going to do is an advertisement for Canada. <laughs> it's a, it's a kilometer away. It is not Europe. Um, <laughs> we have orchestras in Canada. <laughs> we have some great orchestras in Canada. And as a result of uh, some recent decisions by our federal government, skilled individuals who've been offered a role in a Canadian orchestra have been fast-tracked in terms of getting into the country and being able to access permanent residency because our government has recognized the importance of international cultural exchange and that Canada is made stronger by workers coming from other parts of the world with their unique skills. It makes us better, and there's also strong um, pressure on Canadians to take their skills to the world stage as well. So that's my, my advertisement. I will now move on and say that. <laughs> and uh, by the way, if you want to know about uh, jobs in Canadian orchestras, you can come to the Orchestras Canada website. We, have, we run the recognized job board for Canadian orchestras. 
and it's orchestrascanada.org. The job board link is right on our front page. And it's not gray either. So, <laughs> we're extremely colorful. <laughs> and You're all purpose. dressed in gray, I notice. <laughs> I did it in deference to you guys. <laughs> so, our major uh, question at this, uh, in this elite gathering back here, composed of people who live very close to the Canada-US border, I discovered, is that we are fascinated by what's going on in Europe. We are absolutely intrigued by the depth of orchestral culture, by the accomplishment of European ensembles, and we realize that as administrators, we have peers who are doing exceptional work, and we want to know who they are, we want to know who to talk to in order to be introduced. We've got a number of people doing extremely distinguished work in the area of music education and community engagement programming. And we want to know how we learn what you are doing and how we can join the international dialogue in connecting people to music, as is being done in your two countries. Well, you come to classical lyrics, <laughs> <laughs> which you have. <laughs> anyway, take it away, Anselm. Anselm and Mark, do you want to answer both of them? I, I got a bit lost in that. Um, <laughs> basically, who to talk to. Yeah. Um, well, look, there's also, of course, the, you know, the artist. We haven't really talked about the artist, the role of the artist managers. And obviously, a lot of the artist management companies are based in the UK and in Germany. Um, and so they're the primary engines for the marketplace across Europe. So there is an important role of, of engaging with those artist management companies. So as well as Classical Next, there is the Ayama Conference, which is a sort of meat market for classical music. Um, but it is, it is where you get to meet the people who can, who can find you work, obviously, in terms of being a soloist. In terms of orchestras, who to talk to, then the, the art artist managers have got their projects and tours companies, make friends with them, um, and they're, they're, they're well experienced to be able to set up those sorts of touring opportunities that you might be interested in. Is that the right answer? No, I don't think I've done it with our Mr. But I, I, let's refer to Germany just for, for, for a sec. Um, if I say it's very easy to have the funding from public money in Germany, it's uh, also the very question that you have to be a very political person because the politicians are in charge, like sponsors or donators. And times are over when politicians went to the concert and gave you the money automatically. So every year you have to run after the money. But uh, it is very important to build these bridges to politicians and to really make them familiar with the orchestra and the sense of educational work that the orchestra and the musicians are doing. Um, so to learn something about how the, let's say, mid-European uh, 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 way goes would be to talk to politicians or the people who have built the bridge in between politicians and the people in the orchestra. Okay, I think we have time for one more question from this group here. Oh. All right, he's dying to do three. Um, cultural aspects for people considering living in Europe, including whether or not we should know, have a great working knowledge of languages before we go over, and the question came up of ageism in German orchestras. Right. Okay. Well, look, um, I'm going to state the bleeding obvious here. We speak English. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and you, you get a fast track past our immigration system by being English language speakers. Uh, plus, we have what's called a short occupation right. So for principals and numbered positions, there's also a fast-track route through that, that um, dials down the controls that are otherwise imposed on people who want to work in the UK. So, uh, I'm and of course, if you go to other countries, you know, they speak German. Or you may even have to learn how to speak Hungarian. Nobody can speak Hungarian except <laughs> Hungarian. So, yeah, we've got a language advantage. But in terms of ageism, I wanted to add to something that Anselm said. Uh, we do not have a retirement age. In fact, our government abolished the right for any employer to fix a date by which you must retire. Um, so we are going to have an increase. There will be older people in our orchestras probably as a consequence of that. But I don't envisage for us ageism being at all a problem. But I think that question was possibly directed towards this nation. Well, it, sure, it helps to have a basic German to find your way through. But actually, if, if you work in an orchestra, um, for example, I was executive director of the Stuttgart Chamber Orchestra and the first concert master was an American. And he was doing all the rehearsals and the talking to his colleagues in English. So most of the German orchestras 
their working language is uh, English because of all the foreign conductors and soloists who come in. But of course, uh, in your social surrounding and uh, make your way through the German, German life, you need some basic German, of course. But it, uh, not to have any German when you enter Germany would not be a problem for you to find a job. Okay, I'm afraid we're out of time. This was so short. Um, they now ha there is now the showcase going on. Um, so we all want to check that out. With your further questions, you now know what we look like. We're here. We're here through Sunday morning, okay? Find us, ask us, we'll be happy to answer as best we can. Okay, thank you so much for coming.